Hi, I'm Kelly Kelly and you're watching 96 Studios. Welcome to Tucson Comic Con. Hey everybody, I'm Cisco. And I am El Tampoco. And finally, we have come back to Tucson Comic Con. Which is very exciting because this is the first year, the third year in a row, we got media. So let's go ahead and uh, run around. We're going to nerds, geeks, and art. Same old drill. Without further ado, let's get into it. So what's going on behind me right now is the Little Heroes event um, where Tucson Comic Con allows families with special needs children to come in an hour before the doors open and get to meet uh, cosplayers, get to roam the exhibit floor, get to go do everything one hour before the main doors open and everyone floods in. Uh, you have kids with sensory disorders that can't stay long enough, so they allow those kids to come in and uh, you know go wild, have a blast. Um, I think that's an awesome thing, and uh, no, thank you Tucson Comic Con for doing that for those kids. So we got media. This is uh, before everybody comes from up top of there to in here. This is this is how everyone's setting up still, getting last minute things going on. You got dudes hanging up posters and whatnot. So this is the access that media gives us, and we're very appreciative to Tucson Comic Con for allowing us to get that media badge. We really appreciate it. A lot of love for uh, 96 Studios. Tucson Comic Con, my wish for you all is that when you leave here on Sunday, you leave with absolutely nothing but a pocket full of cash. Ooh -ooh. You see, uh, we were down there uh, right before the doors open. You see people trickling in now people conducting interviews uh all the vendors are back at their booths we'll be going back down there just came upstairs to see what the other rooms have in store all right so we got game booths in this uh ballroom we got people setting up for uh magic and other different games amazing discoveries is here arcade standing around only means cobra arcade has to be here. Look how cool is that it is. BB-8. That is gnarly looking. So right now, we're combing the aisles. Uh, everyone's here. Everyone's uh, everyone's around us, as you can see. Um, kind of weird recording, having everyone stare at you all the time. But uh, we make it work. And uh, bumping into people is not fun either. But right now we're working for toys for collection, comic books for collection, looking for toys for modification. Um, definitely want to find something worth worth uh, uh, spending a big amount of money on, or a small amount. It doesn't really matter as long as we can be like, hey, this is going personal collection, or this is going to go for the show for modification. Booths like this, it's like a Goodwill at a con. Look at these. Twenty dollars. We could do something with this too. That's why I love booths like this. You could look at. Oh, I have all. Nineties, Pokeball. I have all of them on open. You could definitely do a lot of things with stuff like this, especially 
people like us that make our own toys and stuff like that, custom my toys are so much. Look at this thing, dude. We could we could do something with that thing. Look at that. Is it open? Oh, look at that. Oh, something's supposed to sit in there. Look, we could do a Batmobile for 15 bucks. Oh, look at this tin. 1966 uh, Adam West Batman. Mobile. Mobile. Look at these. Open Funkos. These are nice. Look at this. Proton pack. That's awesome. See, look, look at the Rancor. Look at They got the Thanos glove down there. See, this is where we could do a lot of damage. We could clean up. How much is the link? 25. Oh my god, we might have to come get that thing. Three bucks. We can do a lot of damage here. This right here is Old Pueblo Comics booth. We know them from uh, hanging out at Harley's Toys and Comics all the time. And they have great comics in there. Let me guess, you want to try to buy one of the mystery bags? No, not for, I don't have that much. Do the $8 one. Do the $8 mystery box. It could be anything in here. Chinese it could even be a boat. <laughs> it's like you open it up like Chinese food. Oh, sorry, that's my lunch. <laughs> <laughs> Where did the mushu pork come from? Oh my God. <laughs> Was it? Yeah, yeah look at the Was Batman Beyond. A, a box exclusive one? It was like... Uh, there was two Batman Beyonds. The one they, re they came out with was the repackaging of Batman Beyond, but it's all like more chromey. Yeah. So that's the first one they came out with and stuff like that. But everywhere you turn, there's Funko Pops. But so what, what are you looking for? I don't know. I'm just looking for something like nothing expensive, but something that just stands out that I don't have. Collection or customization? Mostly collection, unless it's something really cheap and then it'll be customized. Yeah, there's enough toys here that we could... Roam for days. <laughs> you look to your right, toys. You look to your left, toys. Look straight ahead, more toys. More toys. There's so much stuff. And props. The, the foam prop game is hard here. And plushie game is hard here. So in the back, they have uh, food trucks, which is good. Because we're hungry. Um, Cody's at one of the trucks right now. I'm going down the line to see exactly what they have. After lunch, we're back on the grind. Look Give at it. some kind of characteristics. It's the Zuda dolls again. And, uh, hey, they look like, we can go ahead and, and my friend Millie, she gave me a check. Hi. <laughs> we're hanging out yeah, because yeah. we got we've been walking around and I just ate and I ruined my shirt. <laughs> There's nothing else for us to do. I mean, so because well, it's a tons for us to do. It's just thousands of steps have been walked today. How's business today? It's fantastic. It's fun anyway. Yeah. But if it isn't good. <laughs> she sells rocks and not in the sense of going down 6th Avenue and buying rock I mean like she literally sells like mineral rocks crystal rocks that's gonna be interpreted so bad <laughs> the zoo to those people look it it's Ronnie with Harley's Toys and Comics yay what are you doing today and giving out prizes. Ooh, can we cheat? Here? I would hope you would know these answers. All right, I would hope we would, would know these answers too. These They're doing the scavenger hunt again this year. Are we gonna do the scavenger hunt? No. Well, what's another name for Superman? Of course, it's the Cape Crusader. No, I'm playing. Man of Steel. <laughs> Boom. Here's my, where's my prize? <laughs> we got a book or candy? We got a hundred well, Of course, comic book, you know us. Oh yay, comic books! We're not gonna take it. Here you go. <laughs> we get enough. We get enough free comics from her every time we go over. You've had to have had that comic. Yeah, <laughs> we appreciate it. Don't say edible too loud. <laughs> I won! See? Fat good prize. Yeah. Alright, see you later. Alright, see you later. Uh, 
I'm here with uh, Logan Noggle. He's a local Tucson artist, uh, also a podcaster. Um, so you tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, the artwork you do here in Tucson. Yeah, uh, so like in 2015, I decided to start doing podcasting and writing. I was going to school for writing, and I decided I, I w always grew up loving comics, like Spider-Man, Wolverine. My name's Logan, so like grew up loving those like characters. Um, but then in 2015, I decided like the stuff I wanted to do was make the things that I already love. So it's like listening to podcasts and chatting with people and mm -hmm. getting to talk, talk to people about what they love. So then I wanted to do podcasting and, and same with the writing. Like I love storytelling and you know reading fiction that can move beyond and like make someone think about something outside of themselves. And comics were the perfect medium to do that. So I had been writing forever and I didn't realize comics was what I I already loved comics. I didn't know I wanted to write them. So does all your inspiration come from comics? Or is it like, do you read novels to get inspiration? Yeah. TV shows? Yeah, when I was a kid, King Arthur was like my favorite book. So like, I used to carry it around. Uh, so between like, and then I was always a big movie kid. Star Wars, uh, like Iron Giant was like one of my favorite. Like, man, I, I grew up loving movies. And, and I would watch behind the scenes and see how everything worked. Like, I want to know everything about storytelling. And comics were just like the way I want to facilitate that. But yeah, I've always loved. I, I've been inspired from books as a kid, TV, cartoons, everything. Yeah. So we do a little bit of the podcast stuff, and my podcast inspiration came from you, and I, I've told you that. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I love the stuff you guys were doing in Portland. Yeah. Um, how, how did the podcast stuff come around? Uh, I, I was like listening to podcasts, and when I got, got started writing. Uh, one of my friends was like, you should like talk about your journey. And then that kind of changed into talking about other people's stuff to inspire me to, to work. Like, All right. Learning from other people. Uh, and it just became this giant like love of talking to other people. And then since we're influenced by movies, let's talk about movies, you know? And it just became this like big expansive thing. I love that. Yeah. So, uh, where can people follow you on on social media? Uh, it's super easy. Just follow me at that Logan uh, on Twitter, Instagram, and that Logan.com is my website where I have my books and everything. Awesome. Uh, we love supporting local artists, especially local artists that come from Tucson. Uh, Logan, appreciate it, brother. Awesome. Thank you. Have a great con. All right. Thank you. So, now we're back up here in the game room. Um, as you can see, more people have started taking the spots. People laid out games and stuff, and we're gonna probably play some arcade games. I found the Arturo Fuente yeah. himself. How you doing today? You yeah. have a good con? So far, so good, That's man. Good. Yeah, yeah, you? Oh, I've been here for like hours. Yeah. He's somewhere doing something and running around, and we uh, we've been just videotaping all day. We've been having a good old con. Right on, so, man. That's good. That's subscribe, good. subscribe, subscribe. See, uh, walking around all day, uh, you get to uh, hang out at random people's booths, Adam. Um, What's up, you guys? We're at CLW's booth right now, just hanging out. Just taking a load off because we've been doing a lot of walking. We've got the only couch. Uh, the, yep, the only couch. It's like the friend's couch, you know. It's iconic now. 
<laughs> Kelly Kelly sat on here. Flip Gordon sat on here. This is going to be the world famous couch. There you, there you go. We're going to need this couch when we do podcasts. There you go. You have to come to, <laughs> over to uh, the Cactus League Wrestling School for that. Oh, yeah. Definitely. We're going to be definitely be there. That's going to be a, vi a later video. Hopefully in about a month or so. Or maybe at the beginning December of the year. 1st. December 1st. Is when we open. That's right. So maybe maybe we can set something up. We'll, we'll try to be there. Definitely. All right, I'm uh, sitting here with John. He's a local artist here in Tucson. And um, so, John, what's the stuff you're working on right now? Uh, well, for the convention, I actually just got the first two issues of the Bubba Patrol collected. Um, I'm super excited about it because it it's. Uh, I went in and I recolored the entire interior. Um, originally, the book was like one panel per page because I just didn't have the time for it. I didn't want anybody else to touch it. Um, it's on newsprint which is like super exciting for me. Um, in September, we came out with the Bubba Files, which is like my secret files and origins, which I'm a huge fan of. So you get little bios on all the dogs and all the characters. Um, and then another thing that I was always a big fan of as a kid was the trading cards had those uh, stats to tell you how strong yeah. the characters were, how tough Speed, they were. Speed, dexterity, yeah. stuff like that, yeah. So I put those in there because I just thought it was like it's super important. Okay. Um, and then specifically for the con, we did uh, a an exclusive, and it is a cover that I did potentially for um, a retailer when we did the first book, and it's called Lunch Break Bubba's, and it's got Sabu and Agnew, who are the featured stars of issue number one, hanging out on a on a girder. Uh, just like the old Depression era photos, yeah. I just got a kick out of it. I okay, it would be fun to do that. And in the in the there's a a welding bead on there that says Tucson Comic Con 2019. So a little you know, Easter egg on the cover. Okay, yeah, yeah. And you got a mountain. Oh, a mountain in the background, a very Tucson. Yeah, yeah. I wanted people to be able to like have something that was like very synonymous with Tucson, identifiable. Yeah, because the the story takes place in Apex City, which. I'm making a border town, um, but it's a cross between Tucson and San Francisco. Because okay. like, I'm familiar with Tucson. I went to San Francisco years ago for one week, fell in love with the city, and um, just wanted to be like, got to be near water, but I wanted, there's stories that are going to tie into Mexico directly, so I want to have be somewhere near the border so that it makes more sense. So where do you uh, pull inspiration from? You know, like TVs, movies, other comics, novels? Um, well, the, for the Bubble Patrol, the main inspiration is my dogs. Um, they are my heroes. They, uh, they save my life every single day. I, I have obsessive compulsive disorder with anxiety. I fight bouts of depression. Um, even though I'm now straight edge, I used to have a really bad drinking problem. Mm -hmm. And those dogs were always there and helped me pull through it. Uh, get sober, change the direction of my life, and get these books done. So I thought, how do I pay tribute to some creatures that they never judge me no matter what happens, mm -hmm. and I can show the world like how important they are to me. And um, But the, the books pull direct inspiration from a ton of different movies I saw as a kid. Yeah. Um, there's Easter eggs. I, I don't even know how many Easter eggs were in the first issue. There's Indiana Jones, um, Sin City, but it made it a positive, like uplifting moment. It's not like all super dark. Um, the X-Men, as you can see, the cover to this is uh, homage to Uncanny 133, mm -hmm. where Wolverine's fighting through the Hellfire Club, Club guards. And this is actually a scene that I didn't put in the script of the issue where Agnew and Sabu fight through uh, robot hamster sentries. <laughs> and But the whole joke is Sabu tells Agnew there's robot hamster sentries and Agnew's like, yeah, sure, you're not going to get me with that twice. And then the very next page, it's like after a titanic battle that had to be edited out for budgetary reasons because I wasn't going to draw the whole thing. Yeah. Um, but that was the whole design uh, for the issue. Um, I mean, pro wrestling... Uh, two of the dogs are named after pro wrestlers, two of my favorite wrestlers, Foley and uh, Sabu, um, okay. and just a, a ton of different stuff. I mean, pretty much anything you can think of is is stacked in the books. Well, I, I love that. Uh, no, I love that you put your your story out there. I love that you, uh, you know, this is a tribute to your animals. Um, where can people follow you on? Uh, you can follow me on social media, on Instagram. I've got two Instagram accounts. 
The one that's gonna showcase anything, all ages in Bubba Patrol is gonna be ahb.kids with a Z. Um, the other profile is anti.hero.brand, which is the overall parent brand. And um, same thing, you go to uh, Facebook, we've got an AHB Kids uh, Facebook page and an Anti-Hero Brand Press Facebook page. Um, you can message me there. We're also, one of the things, um, I'm hoping people submit stories, if they read the Bubble Patrol, they like it, or they have stories about their own animals and how they inspire them on a daily basis, uh, send me an email, or fan art to uh, bubbatales at gmail.com because we're gonna feature them in future issues. We've actually got a letters column in this collected edition. So we're super excited about having that as well. All right, awesome. Uh, thank you for sitting down with us. Yeah, we're gonna rest of the con, brother. Thank you. I'm sitting here with uh, Brian Polito. Yes, you are. And uh, he is the owner and uh, founder of Coffin Comics. Um, so how, how did the, how, how do comic books influence you in your life? Well, comic books influenced me since a very young age. Even before I could read, I was always curious about these words and pictures strung together. And I actually had a reading disability, or I was a little behind in school in first and second grade. And comic books was one of the ways that I really learned to read, and I really learned to excel. Because I was reading Marvel Comics and early 70s and Stan Lee would write these big words like Excelsior and I, I learned how to like break those words down and yeah. pronounce them. That's awesome. So where do you pull inspiration from? Pop culture, movies, other comics, novels? Well it's a great question. Where I tend to pull inspiration for comics is a it's a bit of a there's a whole recipe to it. So I like old horror movies, 70s and 80s comic books, music and I think I just have my own little muse going in my head of what I'm interested in but those I'll kind of refer to those things deep in my mind and they're part of the recipe so for upcoming um, local artists uh, upcoming uh, novel journalists uh, people who want to get into the business of comics they don't know how they want to know how the cookies made sure what's the what's the stuff the the inspiration the advice you would give to them well the advice that I would give to young people who are looking into breaking into the comic book industry is to study so it depends on what you want to do in the business if you want to be a writer you should practice writing and go take some writing classes if you want to be a penciler an inker or a colorist or a letterer you definitely want to take art classes and in the beginning almost any type of art class will work but of course you want to concentrate on figure drawing because dynamic anatomy is very critical to the process awesome i really appreciate taking the time to talk with us today the pleasure is all mine man you guys have been great i've been brian polito man holler at your boy oh, what can people follow you on well, uh, social media well people can follow me on social media i'm old school i'm on facebook so it's facebook forward slash brian polito we also have a website which is the portal to all our other our insta and twitter and that's ladydeathuniverse.com Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you, man. Right on. So, I'm curious, and I got to ask, what does Comic-Con mean to people? I have a few questions. I'm going to go see if I get a couple answers. Uh, in the beginning, actually, when I started, it was all about friendship, community, uh, cosplaying. I was really big on cosplaying at the time, like, five years ago, maybe. Uh, now, I've kind of evolved into a business kind of style where it's still awesome to come to comic-con for businesses and uh stuff like that to actually sell stuff but it's still also really fun to see cosplayers like the more cosplaying i see like every day past my booth like the happier i get um just fun to watch every day well comic-con for us is a great way to express ourselves however we feel like it so it's a great way to dress up and have fun and you know get to express your fandom however you best choose and the puppies <laughs> Sometimes there are puppies. <laughs> Comic-Con to me is a community. It is a place where people can come, both vendors and fans. They can get together, share their common interests, just nerd out, geek out, whatever they uh, are into. You know, there's pop culture, horror stuff, sci-fi. It, it's so immense. And the quality of the art that's been coming out lately is amazing. So as you probably are going around and seeing some really awesome stuff, it's just, it's like a community, it's a family, you know? 
and everybody that comes here, we all are kind of connected by some something that we all love. So for me, that's what it is. It's where you can express what you like, your likes, your interests, be it games, anime, Marvel, DC, like comics and all that other stuff. So, and it's cool to watch people who are all dressed up in cosplay and stuff like that, even though I'm behind my own booth all day. <laughs> But seeing people and all that other stuff, doing the things that they like and, and seeing the things that they enjoy is really like, I don't know, wholesome, I guess. Okay, so Tucson Comic Con um, in particular means family. It means friends. It means community coming together. Um, it's basically like a big party uh, where all of my friends actually showed up and where we just have a blast, we talk pop culture, um, we talk about our lives, we catch up, um, because I've been partying with all of these people for years. A lot of these guests, a lot of these vendors have been a part of this convention from year one, and so to see them at Tucson Comic Con every year is just like a big family reunion. So that's what Comic Con means to me. Hey, hello out there everybody, this is Brian Polito, creator of Lady Death, and what does Comic Con mean to me? It means community. It's a great opportunity for people of all shapes and sizes and interests to get together in one room and express their love for pop culture. So that's what Comic-Con means to me. It means a chance to be who I am, who I am myself. Um, it's like being able to participate in a world of people who aren't really like accepted. Like people who wear sports jerseys and things, but they'll frown on people who like games call us these are all people that get along like a, like a brother. It's kind of like an escape from everything else, from like school and all that kind of stuff, just a place where you can like relax and just enjoy yourself without thinking about anything else. Comic Con to me is where I can actually dress up, go out somewhere, cosplay, without getting wearing looks or um, I, it's just really I, where I can just be myself and do what I want to do. Uh, for me, it's a lot of my childhood, like all the things that really made being a kid a lot of fun, someone to uh, inspire me. Like my brother collected comics, so it's what inspired him to do a lot of art and it made me want to draw and I'm so glad to be a part of something I grew up with. I'm just glad to be here. It's my first time here and having our shop out here with our brand new stuff and putting it on our shop at Crafty Fox on Facebook is just great for us because we get to do something that we love and meet awesome people out here. Yeah, you will never meet these people anywhere else in the same comfort zone. There's a lot of comfort in being here, I think. So Comic-Con is a really important family event to us uh, as a family. Uh, we've gone every year for as long as any of us can remember. Um, it's, a, it's a big deal, you know, uh, normally um, we do the all three days, but this year we're only able to come today, so we're making the best of it, but we all look forward to it. It's, it's, it's where we can really let our geek shine and uh, we can all kind of be ourselves. Uh, Comic-Con is really important to me because I get to let out the characters in me, basically. I get to dress up. Uh, it's a location or place where I can find a lot of things that deal with just the comic culture and stuff like that. What's um, new, what's coming out, a chance to see um, if there's something that I want, I'm interested in and that. I generally do comic collection, you know, independently. So I like to see what's coming around the corner, what's coming in the future. Just an atmosphere to be your, yourself, go out and dress whatever way you want, and that's pretty much about it. Um, well, we're a big decent family, so it was a lot of uh, superheroes and villains for us, so that's what we were yesterday, so today it's just pretty much enjoying the awesome. scenery now, but things for sale. Awesome. Me, it's just like superheroes and stuff. Yeah. Uh, like the merchandise here? a bunch of people getting together and having fun and celebrating what they love. It's a bunch of fans getting together and we're all, no matter what fandom we're into, we're all here celebrating it together. And also this dinosaurs. Family. Comic Con means to me that I get to meet guys like this right here. <laughs> and uh, the camaraderie of all the different artists and vendors and 
And it's just really nice to kind of share this environment with everybody, you know. And then also, obviously, the fans, of course, because they come down and support me and uh, the projects that I work on. And, you know, I can't thank them enough. So it's, it's all good, you know. I love it. Awesome. How about you? Uh, Comic-Con means to me was it's an outlet. It's an okay. outlet for everyone to to share in the the, the the world of nerd, the world of geek, okay. pop culture. Yeah. We all love the same things, but we all we're all different about it. Yep. And that's one thing I love about Comic Con. Yeah, yeah, I mean because you got obviously you got like my creepy stuff and mm -hmm. along with a lot of like really cool niche artsy farty kind of stuff that I really like too. So. And then you got all the Japanese stuff, yeah, yeah, you have yeah, all the everything. major superhero everything, stuff. Everything. That's why I love about Comic Con. Yeah, yeah. Especially this show. This show has got a, it, it's, I think it's finally kind of dialed in mm -hmm. uh, to uh, all the different genres and everything. Because you can walk down these aisles and they're like really cool stuff that I've never even seen before. That I'm like, wow, this is really, really cool. You know, so uh, I love it. So awesome. it's awesome. I love this thing. Oh, I'll show right now. I bought this uh, custom painting one of the artists made. I think this is the coolest thing ever. Go with that. And I got Barrett Fawcett's shirt. Look at that. Oh, yeah, you missed that. I want to I wanna, I wanna, I wanna model this one. You want to model this one? Oh, you got to love Pharaoh. So we picked up a uh, Walking Dead number one. I believe this is a reprint because it's in color. I believe the original was black and white. What'd you grab right there? A uh, Becky Lynch Funko Pop. Yes. What do you got, Cody? I got a, a two by four with an autograph from Hacksaw Jim Duggan. I mean, that's that's, that's pretty good. Jesus. <laughs> Jesus Christ! You can't believe they let us sneak that in here. I know, huh? <laughs> All right, that's gonna wrap us up for uh, Tucson Comic Con. Uh, got autographs, a uh, few pops. Um, Want to thank the Zudu Dolls for allowing us to. Uh, to hang with them all day and bum all off them. Day. All day. <laughs> and uh, we got to eat all lunch. Day. It feels like all weekend. We all got day. to eat lunch with them. We're hanging out. Let's say my our next door neighbor. That was fun. Until uh, we see you guys in the next video. Uh, please don't hit me with that thing. Um, keep making nerd art. <laughs>